Hello, this is Dennis with Walk This Way. Years ago, I was a new director in a hospital, and I noticed this employee uh, putting a census sheet in a file cabinet. Inquisitively, I asked her why she was doing that, and she responded by saying, we've always done it this way, and I don't know why. Have you ever asked the question, why do I pray? Well, Jesus gives this parable of two men that went up to the temple to pray. One prayer was acceptable and the other was not. When we come to God in prayer, uh, praying for others or praying for ourselves, it's important to understand the attitudes that we carry in prayer. This will make a big difference as to whether our prayers are uh, that we're praying to ourselves or our prayers are going up to the throne of God. So let's look at this uh, parable in uh, Luke 18, 10 to 14. The Bible says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One was a Pharisee and the other was a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and prayed. The King James Version says, he prayed thus with himself. He was praying to himself. My dad used to walk around uh, talking to himself, and I wondered, what in the world was he trying to do? There was no one around to respond to what he was saying except himself. So the Pharisee was praying to himself. He was talking to himself, and this is what he said. Oh God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, thieves, dishonest people, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of my entire income. Keep in mind that this is more of the attitude of the Pharisee than what he was actually saying. This is what was going on in his thoughts. This is how he treated uh, everybody around him. He thought that he was better than everybody around him in character. Well, going back to uh, verses 11 and 12, uh, if you read that, you'll notice something very interesting. I could count up five eyes there, and particularly when you're looking at the King James Version. The Pharisee had eye trouble. Well, there was someone else in Scripture that had eye trouble, and you could count up five eyes in these verses too. So let's read this in Isaiah 14, 12 to 14. This is talking about the originator of sin, Lucifer. Verse 12, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregations in the side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. It is sobering to realize that the attitude of the Pharisee is the same attitude as the originator said, Lucifer. Now, the Pharisee recounts all the good things that he has done, hoping that by all those good things that his prayer and his acts of worship would be acceptable. His mind was turned away uh, from God to himself. He was praying to himself. He was talking to himself. Well, going on in the parable here in verse uh, 13, the tax collector stood at a distance and would not even look up into heaven. Instead, he continued to beat his chest and said, Oh God, be merciful to me, the sinner that I am. The tax collector came uh, to prayer with the attitude of not even looking up into heaven, which represents humility. He comes before God in prayer, not uh, looking at all the good things that he's done, but it says he beat his breast. According to 2 Samuel 24, 10 and Jeremiah 31, 9, the beating of the breast or beating of the body represents recognizing that you're a repentant sinner and asking for mercy. That is forgiveness of sins. So let's go on in the parable. 
Verse 14, I tell you, this man, that is the tax collector, rather than the other one, went down to his home justified because everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the person who humbles himself will be exalted. Do you see the difference here? If we come uh, to, in, in prayer with the attitude of exalting ourselves, looking at all the good things that we've done and thinking that all those good things that God is going to hear and answer our prayer, we're going to be humbled. But if we come to God uh, in the attitude of, in prayer with the attitude of uh, humility, realizing that we're the chief of sinners and also realizing that we're not any better than anybody else around us, uh, asking for mercy, that is forgiveness of sins, we're going to be exalted. God will hear those prayers and work mightily uh, to answer those prayers. Now, I left out a, uh, a part of the parable on purpose to close with these thoughts. It says here in verse 13, the tax collector stood at a distance. This standing at a distance represents not only hum you know, humbling ourselves before God, but it also teaches us the spirit of reverence. It's not that we're to be scared of God, but that when we come before him, we should be coming uh, before him in, in respect and reverence. The uh, place and the time of prayer is sacred because God is there. When we're praying with others and praying privately, it is our privilege to kneel before the creator God of the universe. Jesus is our example, and he knelt down uh, to pray. And you can find this in Mark uh, 10, 17 and Luke 22, 41. In the early church, Stephen uh, knelt down to pray. And you can see this in Acts 7, 60. Paul has this powerful prayer to the church of Ephesus uh, in uh, Ephesians 3, 14 20 to 21. And that also applies to us today. It starts out by saying, quote, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, Ezra knelt down confessing the sins of Israel. And you can find this in Ezra 9, 5 to 15, a powerful example of reverence and humility. And lastly, Daniel, as his daily habit was, he knelt down three times to pray to his God. And we can see this in Daniel uh, 6.10. Recently, I was meditating, and that is thinking about what it would be like to be around the throne of God. I was in meditation, uh, thinking about uh, uh, the visions of uh, Ezekiel chapter 1 and Revelations chapter 4 and 5 regarding the uh, what the description of the throne of God and who sat on the throne and also the activities that were taking place around the throne of God. The awesomeness of what I saw caused me to immediately hit the deck. That is, I got on my hands and knees and cried out, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, and holy is his name. Regularly get a glimpse of the throne of God. Our attitude and prayer will be one of holy awe and reverence. And as much as possible, kneel before the creator God of the universe. There are times that it's not possible to do that. And during those times, then prepare our mind to be uh, in an attitude of reverence and respect before we start to pray. Well, thank you for joining me today. Uh, please check out other videos on prayer and Bible study. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on that notification button. Uh, you will be notified of any future videos and we will continue to learn how we can have a close walk with God. Thank you.